Coming up, a heart-stopping sheer drop. <laughs> Struggling to breathe. And the harsh realities are making supper survival style. You're a brave man, Adam. Yeah. The team have done a great job coming through an extremely challenging two days, coping with everything survival school and the Welsh weather has thrown at them. So today, I'm raising the stakes. I'm going to bring them to this disused quarry, where they'll face a death-defying abseil from an overhanging cliff more than 30 metres high. Yeah, they're going to be scared looking down this. I've lost count of how many times I've abseiled down cliffs in the military and on expeditions. It's all about good technique and holding your nerve. They're going to love it. The young survivors have no idea what's in store for them today. You all right, guys? Can you see me? Can you hear me? Yes. OK, so the next part of this journey is going to be physical. It's going to be tough. And at the end of it, you're going to be getting wet. From here, you're going to abseil off the sheer face. It's about 110 foot down to the water. You're then going to drop off the rope into the water and swim ashore back to the bank. You up for this? Yeah. First up to take on the drop is Charlie. Stay up straight now, straight on the abseil. Survival school is taking the 14-year-old way out of his comfort zone. Hey, what's up, guys? My name is Charlie. And today At home, Charlie is full of confidence, immersed in the virtual world of the internet. But out here, it's a whole new world, and the extreme night in the derelict building left him close to quitting. I just don't want to stay here tonight. I was impressed with how he came back stronger yesterday and pushed on up the mountain. And now he faces another big test of nerve and determination. Biggest fears is probably just when I'm at the top looking down because it looked pretty high. It takes bottle and encouragement from instructor Scott to trust the rope and get going. Back, get your shoulders back. Oh, I don't feel, this doesn't feel safe. It's very, very safe. I'm slipping already. Go down. I'm just Side. slipping off the wall. Lean back, look at me, you're like this. Now off you go. That's a perfect rappel abseil position. Good lad. After a few stutters, Charlie is on his way. It's okay. Put your leg out, otherwise you'll hit the wall. but he's struggling to keep his feet on the wall. That's it, that's it, nice and right. And he starts to show real signs of panic. Struggling to breathe. Are you all right? Just take a few deep breaths where you are. Leader Sarah helps talk him down. Good luck, get your breath back. Oh, I can't, man. It's okay, don't make it hard work. <sighs> You haven't got far to go. Untangle your feet. All credit to Charlie. He's not letting the cliff get the better of him. There we go, perfect. And lock off there. Ah. Are you ready? Three, two, one, let go! I honestly did not think I'd be able to do that. I was waiting around at the top and thinking, am I going to do it, am I not? So I'm really happy that I've done it now. It's not going anywhere. Okay, yeah. You control your descent. In contrast, Tara is showing no signs of nerves whatsoever. I'm really, really excited because I really like abseiling. I think it's really fun. Tara has spent much of her life in the Australian outdoors. It's given her lots of confidence to take on the wild. And so far, she's risen to pretty much every challenge at survival school. Yeah! That's it. But this is in a different league. Come on, Tara! Oh my goodness, I'm high up. And 30 metres up, her confidence starts to drain away. You okay, Tara? This is really actually quite scary. Oh my goodness. Whoa, okay. Halfway down, my feet started to come off the wall. So I was scared I was going to bang forward. Ow, rope. Oh my gosh. Ugh. I just lent back a bit more and I <laughs> saved myself. <laughs> uh, uh, one. Woo, woo. Good. 
I just went down that hundred foot drop abseil down it and it was so scary. And if even super confident Tara has found it tough, that's not good news for Adam. He's always had a serious fear of heights. I don't know why I'm scared, it's just something I'm scared of. Like, you know that way when you can't explain a fear, that it just, when you're doing it, it just takes over you and it's just like, you're stuck. I'm just like that with heights. I <laughs> Sarah's in there. I'm down here with you. I think I will do it, but I'm real scared about it. Bless him, Adam's scared off his socks. He doesn't even like being on a 10 foot drop, never mind 110 foot. Okay, lean back. Keep that rope behind your back. Let it just go through the fingers nice and easy. That's it. Good lad. Down you go, shoulder for part all the time. Adam showing great strength of character to push through his fear. Good. You're in control, Adam. You are in control. Good lad. Nice and easy. Good boy. Quick look over the right shoulder, see where you're going. No thanks. OK. I didn't think I'd ever do anything like that because of my fear of face. I genuinely thought I would freeze and not do it. He makes it down without any hesitation. Good, lean back. I feel, I'm feeling happy, proud, and just delighted with myself. Adam, well done, you're doing amazing. Is that the scariest thing you've ever done? Yeah. Yeah, well done, excellent. <sighs> Throughout survival school, we're judging whether the boys or girls do best overall. And at the moment, the girls team is 3-1 up. So the boys have a lot of catching up to do. I can barely reach the wall. So you're in control. If you go too fast, you burn your hands. Hi, Sarah. Hello. But as the rest of the survivors take on the sheer drop, it's the girls whose technique is most impressive. Good, Evan, you look really strong. Good, Maria, keep going. One, let go. Woo! Woo -hoo! Are you happy? Uh, yeah. I got to the end and my hand was like this. I really didn't want to like drop that rope at all. Let go! Ah! I was shaking loads. It took a massive amount of bravery to do that. That's so fun. Oh, I could do anything now. One, push away. I can't explain how I'm feeling. So I'm proud of everyone and of myself. Moving, moving, moving. My young recruits are starting to act like true wilderness warriors. And I'm also impressed with their teamwork. When Alana hit a low yesterday, it's really good. it was good to see others immediately rallying round. Thursday, waiting for love, waiting for love. And when Savannah got claustrophobic, Kieran was there to help. I'd rather go home. No, you wouldn't. You're doing I your really mum proud. Would. You I tear really that would. off and your mum will be the proudest in the world. Well yeah. done. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Yes, sir. You guys, you're learning more and more to have each other's back. Always look out for each other. And this is what we're trying to teach you guys. What's the worst thing you've ever eaten, though? Oh, the worst thing I've eaten? Probably raw goat's testicles. Oh. Yeah. Well, tell you what happened. This Berber tribesman, they live in the desert, and he got this goat. He killed it, he took off the testicles, gave it to me, I chewed it. Mm. I, ooh, I threw it into my mouth. So then I had a mouth full of goat ball and vomit, and then I had to swallow it both. Oh that was like the worst. It was like a mix of vomit and goat testicles. What was the worst thing you've ever drunk? Like? Probably a mix of, of urine, my own urine, mixed oh. with snake innards, because I'd skinned the snake, oh. and then I needed to pee, but I didn't want to waste the pee, because I was in the desert. So I peed into the snake skin, tied it up, yeah. I had it around my neck and I was walking for like a long time and eventually thought it was time to drink the pee. Got the snake, undid it, drank out of it, but it had been like fermenting in the snake's skin and innards. Like the worst cocktail I've ever had. Have yeah. you ever come close to dying? Like, you actually thought you was going to die in the wild? Yeah. I have come close to dying a few times. Close shaves with parachutes and crevasses and sharks and saltwater crocodiles. Because however good you are, everybody gets it wrong sometimes. We always make mistakes. Back in base camp, there's some bad news. The last few days of terrible weather have taken a heavy toll on one of the young survivors. Savannah is in a lot of pain. When an expedition team spends so much time being soaked through, 
serious foot and body rashes can quickly take hold. And ironically, is Savannah's top effort, both in the derelict building and taking on the mountain, which has given her medical problems. Really well done yesterday with the mountain challenge. We noticed this morning you were limping around a little bit. Okay, and what you've basically got is adobe rash, or what we call sweat rash. It's caused by wet, dry, wet, dry, and chafing. I've had it, Sarah, you've had it, I know yeah. as well. I know how much it hurts, okay? And I know the importance of getting back into somewhere where you can look after it, somewhere dry. And this environment just isn't the best place to be. With a real danger of infection developing, my leaders have had to make a very difficult call on medical advice. We've made the decision, I think it's time to go home. Okay, Savannah. Hey, um, I know it's disappointing, but this isn't a failure. I don't want to go home. So I don't want to accept the fact that I've been this far and I've just got to turn back and leave it, leave the team. Guys, come this way. Just gather around, gather around, guys. Come on, team. You've probably noticed as we had that uh, Savannah's been struggling a little bit this morning and over the last few days. There's no way that she can sort it out, out in the field. So unfortunately, she's going to have to leave the Bear Girl Survival School. Oh my God! Savannah, you, you tried your best all the way you came here. Yeah. Think you stuck through, you did the cage, like the mine, and you ate the worm. You got over a massive thing. My highlights are uh, getting over all my fears like claustrophobia. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and sleeping outside in the derelict, spooky building. Just getting on with all the team and having a laugh. It's one of the best things. Savannah, well done. OK, you've done really well on this course. All right, guys. Oh, it's going to be hard losing a team member, but also a friend, and that's going to be the hard bit. She played a crucial part in the team. If it weren't for Savannah, then I don't think the girls would be free one up. Obviously, losing Savannah is a real blow for the group, you know, and it's going to hit everyone a little bit because they're starting to be really tight. But Savannah leaves with her head held high. She climbed higher than she'd ever climbed before, faced so many fears head on, and I, for one, am so proud of her. On the scale of 1 to 10, I'd write the experience, like, now looking back, 10 off the charts. To help lift the spirits of those remaining, Sarah has a surprise announcement. As a reward for all your hard work in the last few days, we are going to treat you with something quite special. Each of you are going to be given five minutes to have a phone call home. Yeah. Bang in. Bad fun in I'm just excited to like hear my mum and my dad and everyone. I'm happy, but I feel like I'm just gonna talk to her, and then when it's over, I'm gonna just be thinking about her more. I reckon I'm gonna cry this year. Oh, okay. like, I'm just so excited. I just can't wait. Oh, how are you? Hello. Hi, Dad. It's been six action-packed days since they last had contact with their families. Hi, Hi everyone. Hi. How are you? All right. Hey, yeah, you. I'm good. How are you? How are you? Fine, thank you. <laughs> I miss you so much. Oh, I miss you too. And I'm having a really great time. I'm just, you know, just gonna cry because I miss you. I'm good, thanks. Oh, hi, Bubble. Hi. Hello, right, Mum. Hiya. How are you? Okay, you okay? Yeah, I'm okay. For Bailey, phoning home is especially emotional. <laughs> He's been homesick from almost the first moment he came here. I'm in the house most of the time, and I'm with my family most of the time, yeah. So, yeah, it's been different being away from them so long. Yeah. The 13-year-old comes from South Wales and is very close to his family. So who will you miss then, baby? Probably Kenzie and Henry, most. Oh, there we are. I love yeah. Zilak. Wow. Before survival school, he spent most of his time inside at home. <laughs> he even gets his hair cut at home by his aunt. Where are you going to be sleeping in the night? A tent. With all the creepy crawlies. Bailey's come a long way in less than a week, and I hope his phone call helps him stay the course. So are you enjoying it, though? Yeah, I'm enjoying it. But I'm, I'm missing him really much. You miss us, is it? Yeah. All right, we miss you too as well. It won't be long now, will it? No, another week. <laughs> another week? Yeah. 
another week. Are you, you're, are you like, are you? Yeah, I'm alright. So excited to hear your voice. Yeah. What's well, been happening? Oh, it's been it's been unbelievable here. It's been actually it's been brilliant. Can everybody all right? Yeah, everybody's fine. We've got on really well. Uh, yeah, I made new friends here. Yeah, everyone's so nice. We had to do this bungee jump into complete darkness. Yeah, just casually climbed a waterfall, usually. Just normal day stuff. No, oh, I haven't killed any bears yet, but I got voted for survivor of the mini expedition. We literally just get up and just start doing push-ups and stuff. We have to have showers in the river. Oh my goodness! And obviously, like, I miss you guys, but I'm not kind of at the point of crying yet. Keep yourself happy too, Pop. Yeah, I will. Take care, we love you. Thank will you do. Great, yeah. See you in a bit. Tell Grandad I love him loads. Are you missing me? Oh, she's crying. I didn't know much of my sister because she started crying, man, so... It is my sister, man, she's always like that. i got to go now, OK? So we love you. Love it. Yeah, I love you too, bud. Right, love you, guys. Bye. Big hugs. Yeah, bye. I don't know, hearing a voice, it just made me happy, not sad. I was just like, yay, hello. Bye. Not my dad. Yeah. yeah, it was really hard that I... No, it doesn't make me even more homesick, it just makes me want to do it. Just keep on going and try my best. I think for these guys, having that phone call home would have been difficult, you know, on so many levels. Also, it's going to remind them of the physical stuff they're missing. For food, they can't just open that cupboard and get out some pre-packaged stuff. They're having to really work for it. Got a rabbit here. And especially tonight, when they're going to be preparing their own supper, survival style. The aim of this next lesson is to talk about skinning rabbits. Firstly, then we're going to get rid of the feet. Oh. One leg off. Out in the wilderness, animals like these wild rabbits may be an essential source of vital protein. You may not want to be cruel, but this is survival. You're going to have to live, and therefore you're going to have to eat. You want to hit right the end of this blade here. Go. Tara, do you want to do this bit? I can't do the fur, I'll do the meat bit. Tara. Just give it a try. It's your dinner, Tara. Our outdoor girl, Tara, is really struggling. I've never had a problem with, like, handling dead animals, but, like, right now, I just, I can't even look at them. Come on, give her some help, guys. Come on. Come on, Tara. Okay. You need to pull hard. Go on. I'll do it with you, look. Hands here, look. Hands in together. And just peel. Keep going. Go on, Rick. I know that happens, but it's just like doing it yourself and seeing it and smelling it, it's just like really different. Once it's cleaned up though, it looks just like the meat we buy in the supermarket. That's what happens, that is the process. And if you're meat eaters, it's really good guys that you know this is the process. And so, oh, supper tonight. Bon appetit. When it was there, if the eyes were looking at you, and that's what put me off. If it took the head off, it'd be all right for the eyes. I'm going to at least try it, because if not, they'll have died for nothing. You've just got to do it for the sake of the rabbit. Just do it down a bit lower where the blood will be. The boys will be pitted against the girls preparing their dinner. Do you want to do it, Liv? With the girls' team well ahead overall, it's a last chance today for the boys to shine. We're hoping that the girls crumble a little bit. I know that sounds mean, but uh, hoping some of them don't really like it that much. He said feel for it, didn't he? Yeah, yeah he said I feel for it. It's yeah, feel for the bone. Definitely got some strong boys. Kieran, I know he's up for it. Okay. Myself and uh, Adam. No, 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 don't, 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 don't. I'll get it. You're a brave man, Adam. The boys quickly get stuck in, but the girls are a bit more hesitant. Oh, this is where it starts to smell. Can we do it with a knife? Oh. You might cut something that we don't want to. Yeah. Despite her earlier wobble, Tara is embracing the challenge. The other girl was full of great ideas, you know, cut that out, move that away, but they didn't really lay hands on. If Alana and Tara hadn't have skinned that rabbit, I think it would have still be covered in fur. The teams clean up the meat before it goes in the pot. And while their rabbit stew cooks, it's time for today's crucial vote for Team of the Day. The score currently stands at three to the girls and just one to the boys. Each leader will vote in turn, beginning with Sarah. You all tried very, very hard. Adam particularly, you came up very, very strong. So for me, the team of the day goes to the boys. 
Okay, an action-packed day. Boys, you were really brave. At the top of that abseil, fantastic. But I have to go with technique. And girls, you were really flawless with technique. My vote goes to the girls. Well, it's all down to the skinning of the rabbit then. Girls did really well. Alana, you know, getting right in there. And Tara as well, you know, it wasn't something you enjoyed. The boys did finish first though, so it's the boys. The boys have won the day. Okay, that leaves it. Three, two to the girls. Girls, they're catching up with you. Dinner is served and all the young survivors give their rabbit stew a try. I feel good about it. I know that it's fresh as well because I, I cooked it. Like many wild animals, it tastes a bit like something rather more familiar. It tastes a bit like chicken, but then it's got like a weird aftertaste. It just tastes like chicken. It tastes like chewy chicken, really. <laughs> We're now exactly halfway through survival school, and it's great to see my remaining nine recruits starting to develop a real taste for the wild, embracing the hardship, and getting back in touch with their adventurous side. It's like a big sleeper, bit, isn't it? Yeah, it's a big sleeper. Great <laughs> right, night. Next time on Bear Grylls Survival School, Ooh, hard time. an extreme day out at the seaside. Okay, we're gonna get you out of here. And running riot in camp. <laughs> just all over the place, it's just outrageous.